What is happening, everyone? Welcome to G Ball Vision. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the Off Grid Knives Viper version 2. Let's go ahead and get into some of the specs here. We have a gray DLC coated 154 cm Tanto style blade, HR seed at 61. And Off Grid is known for some of the best 154 CM in the game. And I have been carrying this for the last couple of weeks. Now keep in mind, this is not a long-term review. This is just an overview of this knife with a mild review incorporated, just how it's done over the last month or so. And this has received a lot of use and pocket time. The finish has held up very well. Not only is it a gray DLC coating, but they tumble or stonewash this as well, which gives it just a fantastic overall look, and it takes use very, very well. We have a nice low tanto tip here. It's going to be even with the pivot, which is a phenomenal touch by Off Grid. We have a nice low secondary tip here or edge here as well. It's going to be ultra useful. And we also have a nice long straight edge here, usable jimping on the spine and a unique take at the jimping as well. It works very good for the ungloved hand and it also works very good with a gloved hand, which I have used this with gloves just recently, actually, and of course, without gloves, and this is some mighty good jimping. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like this before, but it works very good, and it's not uncomfortable either. It's a great job uh, on the jimping. I'd love to see this more from off-grid and other companies as well we have black dlc hardware and then we have these cross hatch diamond texture g10 scales the chamfered edges just have this kind of long very micro milled pattern in them and then on the flats here is where we have that diamond texturing it looks great and it works very good we have complete open construction with some octagonal cutouts for weight relief. As big as this knife is, it's really not that heavy. We have a deep carry reversible pocket clip here, and we have a filler tab. That way, we look clean. Everything looks good to go on this guy. It is a fantastic looking knife. It came centered out of the box. It came razor sharp. You can go watch the unboxing if you are interested in seeing that. Uh, solid lockup on this guy, and the lockup is rock solid. We tested it, and it performed very good. So let's get into a little bit more of the dimensions here. We're looking at three and a half inches of cutting edge, three and a qu three quarter total edge, and then we are coming down at eight and a quarter, very strong. Uh, so it's a it's not a big knife, but uh, it's certainly not a small knife either. Uh, I think it's basically a perfect size for a EDC user and work knife, plenty of handle there, and plenty of blade length. So let's get a quick weight, 5.8. So it is a little bit heavier than I thought it would be, but uh, it does not feel that heavy in hand. It's very well balanced. Uh, I did not think that this was six ounces, but I guess it is. It, it's definitely a substantial knife. It just doesn't feel that heavy let's go ahead and we'll check the blade stock here as close as we can get to the handle and we are looking at probably 145 yeah one 146 probably 145 would be my guess and we'll just pick a random spot here on the primary edge and see what we are looking at so there, we're probably at 18 thousandths there. So give or take uh, a little bit. My guess would be probably take a little bit off of there. 
And then as far as the secondary edge, it's going to be very similar, 18, 19 thousandths. Uh, but one thing I can say, guys, and we will get to that here in a second, this thing has been an awesome cutter. Not a slicer. It's not a slicing machine. It's not the TRM Atom or Neutron, uh, but it's been a great cutter. Uh, the way that they did this blade, it's just a great cutter. I have. It's been a pleasurable knife to use. Having the tip lower than your typical Tanto, where a lot of Tantos will kind of have that uh, upswept tip, and sometimes the secondary edge is not that useful. But in this case, this is a great useful secondary blade there. It's it's great for a variety of different things. Uh, one of them being any type of chiseling or shaving type work, uh, like micro chopping up of anything, uh, a very precise cut where you want your leading edge of your blade to kind of guide the tip, you know, if you're getting into something delicate. Let's see what this guy looks like in the pocket. So we have our issuing stitches Hank, and I can tell you guys these things carry great. Uh, typically, you don't see anything you know, hanging out of the pocket. They are very well done clips. It'll basically be flush with your pocket, which is a nice touch. Let's go ahead and uh, because I forgot, we'll throw it up against a couple of knives here just so you can get an idea of its actual size up against some other knives here. We have the Elementum, the original Elementum and S35 and the OS 10A 20.5. There is your DECA look as well. How about the bug out? And it's going to be quite a bit bigger than all of them, guys. We have the Spyderco Para 3 there. And this guy is out of order. We have the Hogue as well. And that's going to be a fair comparison right there. And then the PM2 should also be pretty close. Uh, almost dead on for the PM2 there. So uh, it's PM2 size for sure or the Ritter Hogue. Uh, so it's a good, good size and going to be in a lot of people's wheelhouses. Let's go ahead and see what this guy cuts like. And let me know, guys, down in the comments if you have any experience with off-grid. Uh, let me know if uh, you're interested in picking one up. I will leave a link down in the description to off-grid's website there. And it is an affiliate link, so if you do use it, it does help the channel out. Uh, but no big deal either way. They have a ton of stuff over there for any type of need, you know, with a knife that you could have between camping, bushcrafting, fixed blades. Uh, they have a folder and blade shape and size for everybody pretty much. Uh, they have three inch blades, three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three quarter, four inch. Uh, and I think they even have some smaller than three inch. Uh, so they have something for everyone, tons of different blade shapes. So as you can see, that primary edge is just, it's great. I'm not even barely pushing on this thing. I'm just kind of guiding it down. And then that primary edge is the same way. Let's get a little different grip. We'll get the index grip here and, well, we don't need to really do that, I guess. The uh, Once you get it going here, there it goes. Once you kind of get it going, it is really, really nice. And it's easy to transfer from that edge to the primary edge and vice versa. It's something I was kind of curious of. It's kind of hard to do under the camera, but you can easily transition to that uh, secondary edge 
and back into the primary edge even if you needed to. So it's kind of a, a really nice touch there, how that's designed and how it works out. But uh, this thing is definitely worth its weight in gold. Uh, for the money, I think these come in right around a hundred bucks. And I think this is a phenomenal user, guys. If you're looking for functional knives, if you're looking for a work knife, if you're looking for a dependable knife, uh, you're not looking for the flash and the flare and the Tamascus and the Zerkutai and all that, uh, off grid is going to be one of my highest recommendations when it comes to a user. Something you are really going to get on, use it day to day. You know, you're not just taking pictures of it, you're not just uh, flipping it around in the living room. And don't get me wrong, these are very aesthetically pleasing knives, in my opinion. Uh, they also are built so well that they are fidgety. It just comes with the the build tolerances and how well everything is done. They are nice and fidgety. You have a strong detent there, but not overwhelmingly strong. It's just enough to kick that blade out very nicely. And I just tightened this guy up just a smidge. And this was completely fall shut. Uh, I have some other videos of it where it's like that, but I did tighten it up just a smidge uh, just because. But this thing was completely fall shut and it would just drop nice and slow, controlled all the way down. It was nuts. Some of the best action uh, that I have had on the channel. And that's impressive coming from a company that prides themselves on users. So it just goes to show you that you can make a knife that is built to have abuse put on it, uh, to really be used. But if you do everything properly, you have everything tuned right, right finished right, uh, all the correct tolerances, uh, the right detent in here, you can make a fun and fidgety knife and still maintain all the functional good aspects of what a knife should be. This thing is an absolute pleasure. And if Tantos, you know, aren't your thing, uh, for whatever reason, I love Tantos, but if they're not your thing, they have other knives equally just as good with all kinds of different blade shapes. They have drop points. Uh, in the Rhino, they have spear points and drop points in the Stinger series. Uh, the Enforcer series is a modified sheep's foot. So like I said previously, they have a little something for everyone. And now that I'm thinking about it, they have knives that are even smaller than three inches for sure. Uh, how much smaller? Not 100% sure, but I do know they make some you know, a lot smaller knives than even this guy here. Uh, so they just, they nail a lot of things and do a fantastic job. Uh, every knife that I've had in from them has been just outstanding from the fit and finish to the edges that come on them to the solid lockup, the ergonomics, the ability to carry this lefty if you want, uh, Great steel choices, great uh, aesthetic as far as the finish on the blade and the different handle material colors. Uh, just a great job all around. And they were a sleeper company for me for a very long time. And uh, <laughs> that was a huge mistake on my end. And I think a lot of other people probably make that mistake as well. Uh, I I know there's people out there who are questionable, you know. Uh, I had been in the knife community for years and years and years. And I had had one on the channel, and it was one of their early models. It was good, uh, but it kind of left my mind, kind of left my sight. And it took me another year on, from that point to pick this guy up. And I am glad that I did uh, 
just an outstanding selection of knives and a great company to back them. They support the knife community. Uh, they support the 2A community. They are supporting military and police, DOD, DOJ, all kinds of American affiliated entities. And uh, it's just awesome to see that there are companies still like that that are making fantastic products. Let me know what you think down in the comments, guys. I love hearing from you guys. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before you head out. I greatly appreciate it. Helps the videos, helps the channel. Most of all, it helps me out as well. If you're new here or you've been here before and you're still not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below the video. I would love to have you here. Otherwise, guys, I will catch you on the next one.